take you. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim's Special Edition. My name's Camel, and today we are going to acquire and inspect the unique shield known as Auriel's Shield. An ancient Adric artifact, or perhaps even an Anuic artifact, but we'll get into those specifics later on in the video. A timestamp for the overview of the shield can be found down in the description, along with links to my social media and to my other Skyrim Special Edition guides. Be sure to check them all out. And if you are following this guide on the standard Skyrim, you will need the Dawnguard DLC installed to acquire this shield. So firstly, we'll need to come to the Forgotten Vale. To do this, you'll need to be on the quest called Touching the Sky, which is part of the Dawnguard DLC main quests. So if you're not up to it yet, of course, just continue on with the Dawnguard questline and you'll be in the Forgotten Vale in no time at all. And secondly, I would like to apologize because the Forgotten Vale does not have a map but I will do my best to guide you accurately through this frozen wasteland. Okay, so, towards the end of the quest touching the sky, we'll be led up to the inner sanctum of the Chantry of Oriel. If you're unfamiliar with it, just again follow through the quests and you'll be here in no time at all. As soon as you walk in through the doors into this room with a shaft of light piercing through the cold dark, head over to the left, where against the wall will spot what looks like some kind of altar. Well, place the initiates you are onto it. This will reveal and unlock a secret passageway. Again, if you are unfamiliar with the initiates you are, fear not, it's part of the quest that you need to be on to be in the Forgotten Vale in the first place. So if you've made it this far, you'll have that item. Now back here, in this hidden chamber, we can find a frost giant. He'll need to be killed, which is quite a fight but once he has been felled, loot his corpse and be sure to pick up the Ruby Paragon. This is very important. I have done a full guide for all five of the Paragons found within the Forgotten Vale for anyone interested. So now we have the Ruby Paragon, we need to head to the Paragon portal platform. To get here, we'll need to go back near the start of the Forgotten Vale. Again, there is no map, but I'll do my best to explain where it is. So once you come out of the forest at the beginning of the Forgotten Vale, turn right and head north, following the river back up into the mountains. Once you hit the waterfall with the giant at the bottom, head up to the next tier of the river and over on the western shore, there is the Paragon Portal Platform. Simply put, it's just about in the most northeastern point of the Forgotten Vale that you can reach, not including the forest that you start in. So once here, place the Ruby Paragon into the interface and enter the newly opened portal. This will take us to an even more forgotten area known as the Forgotten Vale Forest. Sunken into a deep dale lies a collection of thick, snow-dusted and ice-encrusted pine trees. But most importantly, up in the northernmost section of this forest is what we're looking for. There are some ruins and some trolls and a Falmer warmonger. This guy, right here, is carrying the artifact of ancient power we have come here for, Auriel's shield. Enter combat and the shield will be revealed. Slay everything. Once the battle is done, loot the corpse of the Felma Warmonger and of course, take the artifact, take the shield. And now that we have it, let's check it out. Auriel's shield, its type is heavy, it has a base armor rating of 32, which is on par with the Ebony Shield. It's got a weight of 14, a value of 755. It can be upgraded with a Moonstone Ingot, which requires you to have the Arcane Smithing perk. And it also benefits from the Elven Smithing perk, meaning that if you wish to upgrade it all the way to Legendary, you can do just that without the assistance of Smithing Fortification effects. So, I must say, this shield is a hell of a lot of fun to use in-game. Its base armor is the fourth highest in Skyrim for any shield, but compared to others like Spellbreaker, its armor rating lacks a little. However, I feel its uniqueness totally makes up for that loss. So let's explain the enchantment because it's a little hard to understand. For every five attacks blocked with a shield, it will charge up once. There are three stages to this charging up, maxing out at storing 15 blocked attacks. 
For each level charged, there will be a flash of yellow light on screen, and the shield will also begin to glow. With each stage, it will glow more and more intensely and violently. Each of the three stages also mimics the three stages of the Fulsro Darshout. Doing a power bash with a level 1 charge, which will be 5 blocked attacks, will have the same effect as the Fuss Shout. Doing a power bash with a level 2 charge, which is 10 blocked attacks, will have the same effect as Fuss Ro. And doing a power bash with the level 3 charge, which is 15 blocked attacks, will have the same effect as the Fuss Ro Darshout. This is super cool, because you are literally blowing your enemies away with the power of their own attacks, reshaped into ancient holy light magic. Just like the shout, Fulsro Da, the shield's fully charged power bash light blast doesn't do much damage. However, it can be used strategically, for either blasting a bunch of annoying foes away, giving you time to gather yourself, or for the fun of it. But even better, blasting your enemies off of high places and killing them with fall damage. Ha ha ha. It really does never get old. So again, Oriel's shield doesn't have the best armor rating in the game for a shield, but it is up there. However, this blasting ability surely makes up for that small lack of armor. I mean, come on, you get a full Srodar shield. How is that not awesome? I would also like to add, or just inform you very clearly, that to execute the blast, you need to hold down the block button, then hold down the attack button doing a power bash. While blocking, if you just click the attack button, it will just do a normal bash and nothing will happen. However, while blocking, if you hold down the power button, it will perform a power bash, which will release whatever stored up energy is in Oriel's shield. It took me a minute or two to figure that out, so I wanted to make it very clear for you guys. Ah yes, now we'll quickly touch on some weird in-game mechanics and tidbits about the shield, then move on to some interesting lore behind the shield. So firstly, Oriel's shield maintains its charged glow when dropped or put on a shield rack, making it a pretty interesting decoration piece if you want to stick it in your house. If you are a werewolf and use the maximum power bash, apparently a message will appear informing you that you have consumed a heart and the werewolf perk has increased. There is also a second version of the shield that lacks the enchantment and has the exact same skin as the ebony shield. It's only acquirable with console commands. And strangely, Oriel's shield is a piece of heavy armor, but it benefits from the elven smithing perk, which primarily, apart from the shield, applies to light armor, so it's even more unique in that sense. Now let's discuss the cool and mysterious artifacts lore. In the Elder Scrolls, there are two primal forces, Padome, who is change, and Anu, who is stasis. It is said that Anu personified his own soul into Anuiel, so that he might know himself, and Anuiel's soul was in turn personified into Oriel. Legend says that this shield was created by Anuiel at Oriel's request, so that Oriel could use it in his campaign against the forces of Lorcan during the Dawn Era. As I mentioned at the start of the video, I'm not sure if this shield is considered an Adric artifact or an Anuic artifact. It's very hard to say, as it all gets very intermingled and messy, trying to draw lines in the sand of the Elder Scrolls lore. But like many artifacts of Tamriel, the shield has a life and personality of its own, and it does not feel bound to its user. A popular fable tells the tale of it abandoning one wielder in her greatest hour of need. But this is perhaps apocryphal, so here's to hoping that that does not happen to you or I during our use with it. So be sure to go and grab this shield, and quite literally, have a blast. And here it is, Oriel's shield in action.
there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I've been Camel, and this has been my guide for the unique shield, Oriel's Shield. I do hope this video helped you out, and if it did, you'll be very interested in checking out my other Skyrim Special Edition guides I've already done. Links to them can be found down in the description. Now, down there in the old description, you can find links to my social media. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and if you'd like to support the channel in a more personal way, you can become a heroic patron on Patreon. As I'm sure you know, all of my time and energy goes into making these videos that I create for you to enjoy, so your support is most appreciated and welcomed in any and all forms. So thank you very much for watching, thank you for supporting the channel, and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there soon.